Topic exchanges in RabbitMQ routes messages based on wildcard matches on the routing key, which are specified on the queue bindings. Topic exchanges gives the flexibility to the consumers to pick and choose the messages they are interested in. It's like subscribing to a feed or individual tags. Messages matching these appropriate criteria are sent to the queue. In this video, let's get started on using topic exchanges in RabbitMQ, how to set it up, how it routes the messages, and how the different wildcard patterns can be specified. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in this RabbitMQ series. My name is Rahul, and I make videos on .NET, Cloud, and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS, and I will be using a RabbitMQ instance hosted in Amazon MQ. Amazon MQ is a managed message broker that supports both ActiveMQ and also RabbitMQ. I will be using it to host my instance. However, you can use any of the other options that RabbitMQ supports to host an instance. Now, before we understand topic exchange in specific, we need to understand what an exchange is, a binding, and also a routing key. I have covered about these in my previous video on direct exchange, which will be linked here, and I highly recommend checking that out to more about exchanges, bindings, and routing keys in general. Topic exchange is an advanced exchange type in RabbitMQ. Whenever a problem involves multiple consumers or applications that selectively chooses the types of messages it wants to receive, you should be considering a topic exchange. Some of the example use cases of topic exchange include distributing data relevant to specific geographic location, background task processing done by multiple workers, stock price updates, orchestration of services, etc. Now, when using a topic exchange, usually the message routing key is a list of words that's delimited by dots. Now, you can see some of the examples in here like stock.usd.nyse or nyse.vmw, quick.orange.rabbit, etc. Now, these are different words that's combined together using the dot which forms the routing key on the message. Now, the advantage of using this is that we can use specific wildcards to filter out the message types and the formats that we are interested in. Two wildcards that's supported are the star and also the hash. Now, a star is used to substitute for exactly one word, whereas the hash can substitute for zero or more words. We can see an example in here where there is a producer and there are multiple consumers. Now, based on the message routing key, so in this case, you can see there is a wildcard that's specified on this binding, which is star.orange.star which means it takes any messages that has orange in the middle and has one word before that and one word after that. Any of those kind of message types will be sent to Q1 and will be picked up by consumer 1. Similarly, in this case, we have two bindings onto Q2, which has a star both first and the second word, and the third word must be rabbit, which means a quick orange rabbit gets delivered to Q2. You can also select by hash, which stands for multiple words. So in this case, any message which has a routing key that starts with lazy and followed by multiple words will be sent to Q2. So both of these messages will be picked up by consumer 2. Let's look at an example of this when building a .NET application and see how we can filter and subscribe for messages using a topic exchange. So let's switch over to Rider. Here I have an existing solution set up, which I have been using in my exchange type videos and also RabbitMQ videos. If you want to understand more about the setup of this project, I highly recommend checking out the getting started video on RabbitMQ. From a high level, I have a sender and a receiver. The sender has the send.cs and the receiver the receive.cs. Now in the send.cs, I set up the connection and it uses the connection strings to connect with Amazon MQ, RabbitMQ instance. Once we have the connection, we can create a channel and use that to define the exchange. Now, in this case, it's currently defining a direct exchange. So let's change that to be a topic exchange. So let's rename this to be weather underscore topic, and we can use that to create the exchange. We also need to specify the type in here. So instead of direct, I will be using topic as the exchange type. So now this is going to create a new topic, which is of name weather underscore topic. Now, as we learned before, in RabbitMQ, sender sends the message to exchange and doesn't know anything about queues. So in this case, you can see that the send message is currently sending the message to the exchange, which is that we just created. It also uses a routing key as part of the basic publish. Now, all this application is doing is reading the message and the routing key from a console line and publishing these messages. So once these messages are published, we need the consumers. 
that is where the receive.cs comes into picture. In here, we create a connection and set up a channel to our RabbitMQ instance in Amazon MQ and then start consuming messages from that. Now inside here, we have the queue name also coming for the console.read line so that I can set up multiple consumers. So I take in the route and key and the queue name and set up the key bindings inside this. Now a queue is created only if it doesn't exist before. So whenever we use the queue declare method, it creates a new queue if it does not already exist. So once the queue is declared, we can bind it using the routing keys. So in this case, it's binding using the weather direct. So let's change this to be the topic exchange. So in this case, we can specify weather underscore topic. And similarly, we can also change the below line to use weather underscore topic. So this second line is basically used to bind to the exchange if the routing key is an empty string. So once we have the queue declared and also the queue binding setup using the queue bind, we can now set up the consumers. So in here, I'm using a eventing basic consumer to wire up to the messages coming into the queue. Now that we have set up the topic exchange, let's see this in action. Let's switch over to my console and navigate to the exact same folder and let's navigate to the send folder and start this application using .NET Run. So we have the sender started and it's waiting for sending a message. Let's also start up a consumer so that there's someone listening to these messages. So let's open a new console tab. Let's navigate to the exact same folder and let's navigate into the receive folder. So let's use .NET Run again, which is going to start up the receiver. Now, in this case, we need to specify a queue name. So let's say we are building a weather API application and these sender is sending the messages for different cities in different parts of the world. Let's specify the queue name as QLD, which stands for Queensland, which is a state in Australia. Now, the routing key in this particular case, I'm using to use a geographic distributed pattern. So I'm going to specify AUS for Australia, QLD for Queensland, and also I'm going to spend BNE, which is Brisbane City. So these are basically sending messages for each cities. So let's say we are interested in all the Brisbane messages in this particular queue. So let's enter that. Let's come in to our sender and let's start sending the messages. So let's say Brisbane weather. Let's specify the routing key in this case, which is going to be australia.qld.bne. Now in this case, the message is getting picked up by our consumer. This is very similar to where we use a direct exchange where we are sending a message and the routing key is an exact match on that on the binding. Now let's use the wildcard pattern. So let's open a new consumer in. Now in this case, let's use the QLD queue again and let's specify a routing key which is going to be aus.qld.star which stands for anything inside the Queensland state. So any city that's getting sent will be started in this consumer. Now we have both of these consumers bound to the same queue, which means one of them will be picking the messages. So if you want to close this, we can do that so that we'll only have one consumer. Now we just have one consumer in here that's coming with all the messages that has aus.qld in the start. So let's send a new message. So let's in this case specify Gold Coast weather which is another city inside QLD. So let's specify aus.qld.gc for that. Now that is getting sent to this particular queue as well. Now, if we send the earlier Brisbane, so let's say BNE test again, and let's specify aus.qld.bne, that's also going to come to here. Now, any message that has aus.qld is in fact going to be picked up by this consumer. So we have used the star wildcard to specify that any messages which has aus.qld at the start and has one more routing key or one more word after that gets routed to this particular queue. Now we can also start up another queue. Let's say there is a consumer that's interested in all the weather events that's happening inside Australia, regardless of the state. Now in this case, we can use the hash wildcard. So let's clear the screen and let's start a new application again. Now, in this case, let's specify the queue name as Australia because it's interested in all the messages that's coming to Australia. Let's specify the routing key as Australia.hash, which stands for one or more words. Now, in this case, it stands for aus.qld.any of the cities or also aus.nsw, which is another state in Australia and all the cities under that. So let's specify that and this is waiting for messages. So now let's come back to our message sender and let's send new message. So let's say Sydney weather in this case, 
And in this case, we can specify aus.nsw.syd as the message routing key. Now, this message is getting sent only to the Australia queue because it does not get prefixed by aus.qld. Instead, it's aus.nsw. So, let's say if there is a message for Brisbane again. So, let's say test BNE and let's specify aus.qld.bne as the routing key. And this message is getting sent to both these particular consumers. So you can see this message is getting sent here and also in the other consumer. Now, if we need a consumer that needs to listen to all messages, we can do that as well. So let's start a third consumer in here. Now, in this case, let's specify the queue name as all and let's specify the routing key as just hash. So let's send a message for US New York State. So let's specify the routing key as us.ny.nyc as the routing key. Now, in this case, you can see it's just getting picked up by the new queue and the consumer that we created with just the hash. This is because this does not match any of the aus.qld or the aus.hash binding keys. Now, if we were to send a message for Australia, so let's say again test Sydney and let's specify aus.nsw.syd. In this case, this message is getting picked up by both the Sydney consumer and also by the consumer that's listening to all the queue. Any one of these consumer is offline and if we start sending messages, test and let's say ausqld.bne. Let's also send another message, test1, and let's specify us.nyc, and let's send that. So now this consumer is offline, and when this is coming back online, it will process these messages. So if I navigate into my AWS console, navigate to Amazon MQ, and here I have the RabbitMQ instance set up. So let's navigate into this and let's scroll down to go to the web console of this RabbitMQ. So if I navigate into the exchanges inside this, you can see that we have the exchange types that's created inside this. So we have the weather topic exchange that was created in this specific video. So if I navigate into this exchange type, so let's navigate to the weather topic exchange, you can see the different bindings that's set up on this particular exchange. So we can see the different bindings bindings that we had set up aus.qld.bne to the QLD queue and also aus.qld.star to the same QLD queue. We can see the aus.hash which goes to the Australia queue and hash which is to the all queue. Now if you want to go to any of these queues, you can do that as well. So let's click into the all queue which is currently off and this shows that this has two messages that's ready to be processed. Now this doesn't have any of the consumers online because of which it says consumers are zero. So if I navigate back to our console application and let's start back this consumer and let's specify the queue name as all and also the key as hash, which means it's going to pick up the messages that's inside that queue and process them. So you can see both these messages test and test one were picked up and processed. So if I navigate back into the console and refresh this, you can see that the messages has now come down to zero, which means it's processed this. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.